Today we're going to do render tests for the new Cycles X and Blender 3.0. We'll be comparing full feature scenes, animations, and more, including the new sampling features, Cycles X, and the updated open image denoiser. This video is sponsored by MSI. So in this video, we'll be covering viewport performance, denoise comparisons, architectural renderings, product renderings, stylized scenes, animated sequences, hair simulations, volumetrics, and subsurface scattering. I'm just going to tell you the numbers right now. Overall, things are two to eight times faster depending on the type of scene. And then if you use open image denoise, that can reduce it to mere seconds, meaning it's sometimes hundreds times faster depending on the type of scene you have. However, this video is more than just a quick number. I actually want to deep dive into each type of scene and see what types of scenes are really benefiting from this new update and do comparisons compared to the previous versions of Blender. With Blender 3.0, we also have a new sampling system. So we're going to talk about that and the noise threshold and what that means and what that looks like visually. We'll be focusing on render percentage increases, not just render times. That way, hopefully this is applicable to a wider range of hardware. For the hardware I'll be using, I'll be using the MSI sponsored provided WS76 workstation, despite how light and tiny it is, it is actually very powerful, which is why I chose to render on this computer. My desktop has a 2070 RTX card, which is actually meant for gaming, so it's the 3000 series, whereas the A5000 RTX card is actually meant for rendering. With this laptop, it's been built to be optimized for NVIDIA Studio overall, so I'm hoping that I get a bit more consistent render performance out of it as opposed to my own computer, which is kind of cobbled together with some parts that are outdated and it might not be as reliable for render results. With that being said, let's dive in. So a lot of people talked about Cycles X, but they didn't talk about the new sampling system. So if we twirl this down here, you see that we have viewport render in advance. So I'm gonna go ahead and twirl down render. A lot of these settings apply to the viewport as well. So we have this noise threshold option on here by default. I'm gonna go ahead and toggle that off for now. And you'll see that this looks a lot more like what we're used to with sampling. You enter the amount of samples you want and it renders until that's done, no matter how long it takes. But below, we have a time limit here. If you leave this at zero, it will just act as it is disabled. But we can go ahead and set 60 seconds here if we want and it won't render past 60 seconds. So you could just set a high sample number and limit it by time limit per frame. So this is incredibly useful for animations. If you don't want a frame to go over 30 second renders, you can just set this to 10,000 up here. And then go ahead and set this to 30 seconds and then it'll just kind of render out and stop at 30 seconds per frame up here if we toggle on noise threshold you see a couple options change so the noise threshold here is a number that kind of lets you determine how much noise you're willing to allow in the image and then it is going to render between the minimum and maximum number of samples so that it will determine what is best for the noise level in your scene now i know that this number is kind of hard to tell you know, what does a noise threshold of 0.01 look like? So here's a couple example renders from a real world scene I have at different noise threshold settings to give you an idea of what those look like. And then of course down here we have our denoise option which has been updated to 1.4 open image denoise. So we'll go ahead and check this on, twirl this down. And we have different options here now. We have the denoiser open image denoise. We have our pass options which you want albedo and normal on. And then you have a pre-filter which you can change to fast or accurate. I'm leaving mine on accurate. So interesting enough, when I was testing out tile sizes, I noticed that when, you know, in Blender 2.9, things traditionally rendered better around 256 or 512 for my tile samples, that here in Blender 3.0, that larger tile samples rendered better. The default settings are set to 2048. I found for myself and my render resolution that 1080 was working best. So maybe play with those tile samples and try some larger ones out and see if those are working better for you in 3.0. I wanted to test adaptive sampling versus normal sampling rates. And in my test, I found it to be a tiny bit slower, but where I found adaptive sampling to be more helpful was determining the sample rate I should be rendering at. I'm a bit curious to see this in more of a variety of scenes when I tested it on my own, these were the results, but I'd like to hear in the comments below if you've seen more success with adaptive sampling and save time. I wanted to test CUDA versus optics rendering within Blender 3.0, and the results were that it was a bit faster at 174%, whereas in 2.9, I remember getting around 140%. I'm not sure if this is with Blender 3.0 or if it's with the NVIDIA Studio drivers, but it certainly seems to be also speeding up renders even a bit more than before. I wanted to compare denoising to non-denoising render times in Blender 3.0, and in my experiments, trying to figure out what I felt were good enough results to share online with the denoising artifacts, I found that I was saving about 400% time, 
which is about what I was getting in 2.9, but the advantage in 3.0 is that it's been updated to the 1.4 denoiser, which now yields better results with accurate sample rendering and a little bit more normal details, which you can see here if I zoom in and compare this Blender 2 comparison to the Blender 3 comparison using the new optics denoiser update. Now, according to the Blender developer notes, the viewport performance is better in 3.0 when working with high kind of volume meshes. So heavily detailed single meshes are supposed to perform better in the viewport. So what I did is a couple viewport tests here. I have the one test where I just kind of played through one of my animated scenes with a lot of particles that usually caused me a lot of lag. And I was kind of surprised to see that in Blender 2, I was actually getting about one extra frame per second though that's a pretty minute result, so not really worth mentioning there. It is worth noting that when viewing live render mode in cycles, that 3.0 greatly outperformed 2.0. And this is kind of something hard to show in a video. It's something more you feel as you're moving around, but it was lagging less and loading a lot quicker. And then also I wanted to test out that kind of high volume mesh. So what I've made here is a mega cube. And this mega cube has been subdivided an insane amount of time so that we have millions of vertices. And you can see here in the 2.0 comparison versus the 3.0 comparison that it's entering edit mode quicker. And then if I take a circle select and kind of drag across here, you can see that it's lagging a lot more in 2.0, whereas in 3.0, it's picking up a lot more of those vertices. So definitely some improvements there in the performance. That'll be great if you do a lot of sculpting. I also just want to take a moment and say how great this laptop handled these renders. I'm always concerned with thermals when working off a laptop, but the ventilation on this thing's pretty great and actually handled everything really well. So next up, I wanted to test what it was like rendering kind of product comparison. So if you do like product rendering videos and things like that, and you'll notice that it's only about a 30% increase on 3.0. Now, first of all, let me just say that 30% is quite a bit, but compared to the kind of two to eight times like faster render ranges we could be getting, it doesn't seem like that much. So I dug into the dev notes and into the blogs a bit, and it seems that a large portion of Cycles X speed is actually for more complex scenes, specifically when it comes to kind of hair simulations and things like that, but also light bounces. So light bounces, you know, are going to be much more prevalent in architectural visualizations or kind of like caves and volumetric scenes. Whereas in product renderings, when you just have a single object or two out in the open, you're not measuring as many light rays bouncing around. So I think that's why the render times here, although better, are not as extreme. So next up, I wanted to actually test out that arc kind of viz rendering and see how it did with more light bounces around in the scene. Now this is one of my stylized rooms and I still have some open walls here. So there's kind of less light bounces than there could be, but you see that it brought it up to 271%, bringing the rendering time down from 211 to 48 seconds. So you can see that there's quite a big increase there as there are more light bounces that it actually saves you a lot more render time. Really impressive. Now the hair was a huge increase coming in at 383%, going from 421 to 108, and it just rendered so much faster. But I think what's most notable here is that not only did it render faster, but where it really saved a ton of time was in the BVH loading process. So it actually got to rendering much, much quicker. And I think that's really important to note because I've had a lot of scenes getting hung up when I'm trying to do hair in the scene where it just won't even start rendering. It just gets hung up there forever in 2.9. But in 3.0, that's much better and it loaded in much quicker. Now, volumetrics are where I saw the biggest increase coming in at 446%, coming down from 8 minutes and 34 seconds to 1 minute and 55 seconds. And it's also worth noting that in this scene, this scene's almost entirely encapsulated. So it's in a cave. So there's a lot of kind of light bounces around there. Even though this is really low poly, simple geometry, you can see that with kind of the light bounces and the volumetrics that it really kind of ranked up the render time. And on 3.0, we saw a huge time saving increase. Now, one of the test subsurface scattering, as we all know, that can be very time consuming to render. Now it's worth noting that 3.0 not only has some improvements in terms of its render time with subsurface scattering, but also the material itself has more options now and looks a little bit better in my opinion. And here we had 427% difference going down from two minutes and four seconds to just 29 seconds to render out this scene with my character. 
The WS76 workstation is built for those who need every ounce of power you can get from your computer. I never thought I'd say this, but I may start rendering on this instead of my desktop. I measured thermals during my render tests, and I was impressed at how well it did. It has an Intel i9 processor, an NVIDIA RTX A5000 graphics card, support for Omniverse drivers, plenty of RAM for large scenes, Wi-Fi 6E, 99.9 .9 watt per hour battery life. This is a top of the line workstation for professionals. If you're interested in something cheaper for a hobby, I'll list some of those in the description as well, as MSI has a wide range of options that accommodate all creatives. As usual, I'm so grateful for you watching and I love seeing what you create. Tag me in your creations and stay up to date on Instagram and Twitter at Southern Shoddy.